Hello, um, I want to give you an, an overview of the argument between Keynesian and monetarist schools regarding the, the derivation of the shape of the long-run aggregate supply curve, which is at the heart of ADAS analysis, and you know, from their policy objectives and policy differences between these two groups. Um, but I've got to do this in 10 minutes, and so it's, it, I apologise if I skip over it too lightly, but I hope it gives you an overview. So, the, the heart of their disagreement lies in, in how they believe um, unemployment is resolved in a labour market. So the first thing we draw is a labour market. Now in a labour market, the price and quantity, well the price is wage rate and, and the quantity is employment. And um, in a labour market there is a demand for labour and there is a supply of labour and there is an equilibrium wage rate, W1. But what happens when there is a fall in the demand for labour in a recession? Well, that's where the two groups disagree. Monetarists believe that when there is a fall in the demand for labour, the market will clear, just like any market. Market forces will lead to a lower wage, wage 2, and a lower quantity, Q2. Uh, fewer people will want to supply themselves for work, and uh, so that's, that's why there's a fall in the quantity supplied. But Keynesians believe that, that that won't happen. Keynesians believe that the labour market will, will not allow equilibrium wage to fall easily and that we will only have Q3 uh, employed and there will be excess supply of labour, unemployment, excess supply of labour, resulting in the labour market and that will remain until the demand uh, is lifted again for labour. So, in, from a Keynesian point of view, the wages do not fall easily and uh, this excess supply is created. Um, whereas the monetarists believe that at least, it may take some time, but at least eventually the market will clear. Now, remember that disagreement because now I can show you how that relates into ADAS diagrams. In the monetarist view, in the monetarist view, the LRAS is a vertical line uh, where output is always at the full employment level of output. This is output, national output of the economy, and this is price level. And the output will always be at the, at the full employment level of output because everyone who wants to work will always work. Um, okay, there can be a short run aggregate supply curve, uh, which we can draw in like this. I've probably drawn that a bit steeply. But, so temporarily we've been knocked off the, the YF, but, but workers who are made unemployed will, will, will either choose not to supply themselves at lower wages or will lower their wage expectations and take up work. So if I throw in here an aggregate demand curve as well, what happens when aggregate demand falls? If aggregate demand falls, temporarily we go from this point to this point. Let's call that A and B. Temporarily there is lower output produced, let's call that Y1. Lower output because um, as, uh, as less, less workers are demanded, uh, some workers are made unemployed, but then those workers lower their wage expectations and find work. And we revert to point C on a new SRAS. SRAS describes a point of time when wages remain the same. So as they drop their wages, they find work again and output reverts to the full employment level of output. And so monetarists are not so worried about causing unemployment because they perceive that it will be temporary as long as there's nothing getting in the way of allowing workers to revise their expectations downwards. Perhaps strong trade unions or generous unemployment benefits or perhaps a minimum wage stops the wages falling. So as long as the market is free enough, the labour market is flexible enough to allow wages to fall, monetarists are confident that um, workers will adjust their, their wage expectations. In fact, there are two groups of monetarists who uh, disagree about the speed at which workers will revise their wage expectations downwards. Some economists, like the Rational Expectations Group, actually believe that the uh, workers revise their expectations downwards instantly. Adaptive expectations probably has more supporters, where it takes a little time, maybe, maybe weeks, maybe some months, but workers will revise their wage expectations downwards as they adapt their expectations to the new environment. Having found themselves unemployed, they need to lower their expectations to find work again. Keynesians, on the other hand, do not believe that this is the case. So let me show you the Keynesian view now.
So the Keynesians originally, originally saw the LRAS shaped like this. There's a, there's a potential maximum, the YF level and output, not, no more than that can be made. If you like, that's the same as the limit of a PPF. And then aggregate demand might be anywhere along this curve. Um, if aggregate demand is here, and we're at this point, we're deep, deep, deep in recession, and the level of output is well below the potential full employment level of output. The difference here is that the Keynesians believe that the, this is a long-run position. It's possible that the economy is permanently in recession and permanently producing less than its full potential. And it's the government's job to intervene in the economy and promote policies that boost aggregate demand. That might be um, an expansionary fiscal policy where tax is cut and where government spending is raised to, to lift aggregate demand towards the YF point, creating jobs and not causing inflation, because until we get to this point, uh, any increase in aggregate demand is simply going to, to benefit by creating jobs. Any further increase in aggregate demand will be purely inflationary. As you see, you cannot get beyond YF, it's just going to now lift, lift price. This aggregate, uh, long-run aggregate supply curve um, was modified following the, the work of Phillips and the derivation of the Phillips curve to look like this, where now the, uh, the potential is still YF, but as aggregate demand increases, there is a trade-off as, as jobs are created and unemployment falls and output rises, prices start to creep up. And now it's just a trade-off about what the how much unemployment the, the government would be prepared to, to uh, accept and, how, and what level of prices is acceptable. But uh, you see the difference, the difference between the two views. The monetarists believe that you're permanently at the full employment level of output, but Keynesians would argue because of the, uh, the wage stickiness, where a fall in demand does not lead to a fall in, in wage levels, um, it's possible to be in, in the long run and still be well below the full employment level of output. Sorry about my writing. Um, and it's up to the government to promote active policy to try and lift aggregate demand. And that will be fiscal policy, it could have been monetary policy, cutting interest rates, um, as well as always supply side policies which aim to boost the actual potential output of the economy, supply side policies. Well, I hope that fits in under 10 minutes and I hope that uh, that was of some help to you. Okay, thank you very much.